since binary splitting recursively subdivides our work into units of subwork, then this is a very good candidate for our boundary of abstraction on the cluster. Uh, let me change this on. Let's get this. Hopefully, good songs kind of things. Hmm. Don't want that one either. One. All right, this one's good. If I can hear it. Okay, so Okay, so basically our first task then is going to be writing this code one in a more efficient fashion. Um but two writing it in such a way that it's more obvious that our abstraction boundary is kind of along the uh, distributed computation paradigm. That sounded really corporate for some reason. Um, we need to make this amenable to distributed computation. That's all I'm saying. So, um, so I guess let's start doing that. I copied all of this code over um, so we can delete a good amount of this. I'm going to keep the pi stuff, but the other stuff, like the C list compute pi float, we can do away with that. Um, uh, this Catalan's constant, we can do away with all this. Um, Apri's constant, we can do away with that. So, have I tried using gap for this? Um, not really. Uh, gap is something that I, I mean, it depends. Gap for what? Gap for the number theoretic stuff? No. Gap seems more useful to me for group theoretic computations. The number theory that's required for the number theoretic transform is better done with software package called Pari. Um, but I didn't use PARI mostly because I have a desire to keep things self-contained, um, but also because implementing it helps me understand the math. If I was kind of gung-ho about making this a high-performance system and ensuring it's correct, I would use PARI GP um, to do the computations, but I haven't really considered using GAP for this. Uh, let's see, exponential series, we'll keep that as well. So the binary splitting case we can, so this is, let's go through and label the roles of these functions, whether it would be a, um, whether it be a master node or a slave node. Um, so all of these functions are utility functions. The bin split series, um, let's see, this bin split series is a representation of the computation. So that's going to be both master and slave node. So this is, uh, mass, I'm going to use M for master, um, master, slave. I apologize to anybody who is against the usage of master and slave. I don't remember what the new term for those are, so if you're offended, I apologize, but it's still the term of art, so to speak, and, you know, we can have a big GitHub argument if we want to have a different term. Anyway, uh, bin split computation, this is going to be both master, this is going to be um, computed by slave and uh, sent to master, sent to master. Product computation, that's a, um, that's just a 
utility function. Some series direct is seemingly buggy. I don't know why it's buggy. Um, binary split case equals one. This is probably something that's going to be computed by the slave. Um, if this was not buggy, then this could be slave as well. Um, and uh, combined computations, this is going to be uh, the larger computations will be done by master, uh, smaller subtrees by the slaves. Um, and on the binary split, this is recursive. Again, it's the um, it's the same thing, same as combine computations. Combine computations. Um, larger by m and smaller by slave. Um, and then our co computation numerator denominator. Um, we are not going to make use of the rational arithmetic um, afforded by common lisp. I mean, for those who don't know, we can do uh, divide one, two, three by four, five, six, and we get an actual, you know, honest to God rational number. We, since we're going to be implementing these things on our own, uh, we don't need that. So. Uh, we can take that out. Um, our computation to integer. Um, mm, probably won't need that. Compute series, this is the main entry point. Main entry point. This will not exist in the uh, final thing uh, in the sense that it is here. But we're going to keep it for debugging. Numerator. So, let's see. So yeah, that's, uh, that's basically it. The big exercise now is going to be turning this into uh, usable work units that could be sent between machines. The first thing that we're absolutely going to need to address is our bin split series function. Right now, because the representation is insanely useful, um, right now we are representing basically all of the elements of our bin split series as pointers to functions. When you're working with functions or closures, it is very difficult to serialize those and send them to other machines. We can't take an arbitrary function pointer and expect that this can be um, kind of instantiated on another machine with another um, address space and, and so on. So we will need to change our bin split series code uh, structure so that it is something that can be distributed and communicated through some message passing interface. Um, I'm going to go turn the lights on real quick because it's getting dark. Okay. So one way we can do this, you know, since we have list, we can actually represent um, uh, these quantities here as symbolic quantities. I mean, in list, I can represent lambda x plus one x, and if I type this, I get an anonymous function, but if I just quote it, then I get this symbolic form. So one possible way to go about this is, why not store the symbolic form in here? And so when we distribute the symbolic form, we will uh, be able to reinstantiate it. So if I take the symbolic form where it star refers to the last thing, so if I do plus one one, I can do plus or times five last result and I get 10. So 
if I have this lambda x1 plus x, I can say, for example, compile the last thing. And I get a compiled function. So if I fun call that thing on 10, I get 11. So uh, that's one possible use. Um, we can take this to our advantage um, and and store that and then so once we store the symbolic form inside the series then what we can do is send this symbolic form um, to another machine the machine will receive the symbolic form compile it in whatever way it needs to and finally it, it can be used that way the only thing we don't get are closures meaning if we have some lambda function capturing the surrounding environment, then we will not be able to send that, especially if the surrounding environment isn't known in symbolic fashion. Of course, we could send something like this. We could say let uh, z2 lambda x plus xz. That's totally, we, we can totally send that. Um, uh, we can even eval it and we'll get a closure. Um, so if we can do that, that's fine to send closures. Um, however, if we had already captured that environment, we will not be able to send it. I hope that made some sense. Um, so that's the first thing we're gonna do, is make this serializable. So instead of sending constantly integer one, um, we're gonna represent these as instantiatable lambda functions. So uh, another thing we will want to do actually is be able to um, let me turn the music down a little bit. Um, another thing we'll want to do is be able to inline things. So if this is supposed to be truly honestly efficient there's nothing wrong with calling a function. I mean, all of us do this every day. However, if we want this stuff, let's, where's the computation? Uh, this case equals one. We're fun calling the element of our series, you know, here, 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 and here. If our series are truly simple, ideally we'd want to inline these. Um, but what that means is that we'd have to basically compile this function on its own and it just takes a lot of work so that's something we might want but you know in thinking about it i don't think i'm going to do that so let's start here this is going to be some expression so the type is t i am actually going to uh, do a def type um, expression as t. That's not exactly true because um, like for example that vector isn't really an expression. So expression. Um, let's do representation of Uh, and so that type is t, just for note. So we're going to change this to the type expression. Um, and we have that. Um, it's no longer going to be constantly integer one. All of these are going to represent initially, um, well, let's see what we do for the exponential series. Yeah. I'm going to define required argument uh, slot as error So, uh, 